Good morning. Welcome to worship. Wherever you may be, please take a moment to pause and be aware that God is with you. As we begin, please join me in the call to worship, opening hymn, and opening prayer. Come, worship the Lord who is in our midst today. There is no holy one like our God. Like Hannah of old, we raise our voices to praise the Lord of strength. There is no rock like our God. We prepare to listen and learn with open hearts and open minds. There is no source of knowledge like our God. We trust that righteousness will come on the heels of God's judgment. There is no justice like our God. May the Son of our God lead us into faith. There is no guide like our God. Come worship the Lord who is in our midst today. Let us pray. O God, who answers prayer, we are blessed and humbled that you hear us when we call to you in our time of deepest longing. Receive our gratitude for your listening ear. Amen. Good morning. Today, I want to talk to the children and all of you about the importance of keeping promises. Now, I know we've talked about this before, but sometimes it's good to be reminded of all the promises that God has made and fulfilled for us and why it is so important that we fulfill our promises to others and especially to God. In today's scripture lesson, taken from the first chapter of 1 Samuel, we learn about a woman whose name was Hannah. Now, Hannah lived a long time ago, before Jesus was born. Hannah lived a good life. She had a husband that loved her very much and everything that she really needed. But there was one thing that Hannah desired more than anything else, and that was to have a child. And so, Hannah went to the temple to pray. Now, when Hannah went to the temple, she knelt down to pray before God. And she said to God, Please remember me, your servant, Hannah. Please allow me to have a child, a son. And if you allow me to have a son, I promise that I will dedicate him to your service always. 
Well, while Hannah was at the temple, a priest named Eli saw Hannah there. Now, Eli saw Hannah's lips moving, but he didn't hear her prayer. And so Eli thought she must be drunk. But Hannah said, no, I am not drunk. I am praying out of my anguish, my sorrow, for not having a child. Well, Eli, seeing the sincerity of Hannah's prayer, said to her, go in peace, and may God of Israel grant you your petition, your prayer. Well, at that time and at that moment, Hannah did feel a sense of peace, and she returned to her home and to her husband. And not long afterwards, God fulfilled the promise that Hannah had a child, and she named that child Samuel. Now every year, Hannah, her husband, and all her family would go to the temple for a special worship service and and sacrifice. But for a couple of years, Hannah chose not to go because she was caring for her young son, Samuel. But when Samuel grew up and was old enough to go to the temple, Hannah took him to the sacrifice and to the worship service. Well, the priest, Eli, was there at the temple, and she said to him, Perhaps you remember me. I am the woman who came many years ago to pray for a son and promised to give him to you to serve the Lord forever. And so, fulfilling her promise, she sent her son Samuel to live with Eli so that Samuel could learn how to serve God for his entire life. And sure enough, That is what Samuel did. He became a great leader of God's people. Now Hannah fulfilled her promise to God, knowing that God had fulfilled many promises to her. Like Hannah, we want to fulfill our promises, whether we make them to others or to God, especially those we make to God, whether it's to be a kinder and nicer person, to help others more, to be the kind of person that makes this a better world. We want to fulfill the promises that we make. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for this day, for our family and friends, for our wonderful church, and for all the blessings that you have provided in our lives. Help us to be strong and to fulfill the promises that we make to others in our lives and especially the promises that we make to you. Let us be the kind of people that you would have us be, kind and nice, helpful to others, and always seeking to make this world a better place, the world that you would have it be. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you, and may you fulfill your promises to God and to others.
The scripture for today is a reading from 1 Samuel, the first chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. Listen for the word of God. After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exults in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full will have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful one, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of the anointed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It would be easy to hear or read the story about Hannah and conclude it is simply about answered prayer. Hannah was childless. She prayed to God for a son, and God granted her prayer. But answered prayer is only a part and a small part of Hannah's story. It is important to know why Hannah prayed. Yes, she was dismayed at being childless. In that culture, and at that time, over a thousand years before Christ. Having children was a matter of honor and critical for passing on one's inheritance. But Hannah's husband, whose name was Elkanah, loved Hannah for who she was and had numerous sons and daughters by a second wife as Polygamy was an acceptable practice at the time. In fact, Elkanah said to Hannah, Why do you weep? 
Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? Furthermore, if God granted her prayer, Hannah vowed she would not keep, keep the child for herself. Rather, she would give him up to God for service in the temple as a Nazarite, someone whose complete dedication to God was marked by uncut hair and a stone-cold sobriety. So for Hannah, being childish, a childless, was not the main issue. The problem was the way the second wife, whose name was Penina, treated Hannah. Penina used her children to lord it over Hannah. We've seen such scenes before, have we not? Someone who, through nothing of their own, find him or herself in a superior position compared to another and uses it to their advantage. You will recall that incident in Central Park last Memorial Day when an African-American man who was bird watching asked a woman to leash her dog according to the park rules. Instead, the woman called the police not once but twice to report that a black man had assaulted her. Hannah cried out to God in prayer because a person in a superior position was using their power to keep her in her place. There are Hannahs all around us. She is the college student whose story about a sexual assault is not believed because the young man in question is the son of a prominent family. She is the lone female engineer in a tech company who graduated at the top of her class but is given the most menial assignments. Hannah is the woman who fears for her safety at home but cannot leave because if she did, she would be destitute. Hannah is the victim of power. In today's reading, Hannah prays that God will notice her situation. In a sense, her prayer is one of hope and a test. She believes in a God who hears the cries of the needy, but wants to see it demonstrated in her own life. She cannot believe God would allow any abuse of power to go unchecked. So she calls God out on this. If God is a God of justice, God will not remain neutral. God will side with the have-nots in order to make things right and fair. God hears Hannah's prayer, and in time, Hannah conceives and bears a son. And true to her vow, Hannah gives him up to be raised in the temple where he becomes the great prophet Samuel, whom God will send to find and anoint the first kings of Israel, Saul and David. Through Hannah, God will change the course of a nation. Hannah's response to the birth of her son is a prayer. Hannah's prayer is the basis for Mary's Magnificat, the prayer Mary will give after the angel announces to her that she will bear a son who will become the savior of the world. In Hannah's prayer, Hannah extols the God who is greater than all other gods, who sees and knows and weighs every action, the God who has given her victory over her enemies, this God breaks the weapons of the mighty and gives strength to the weak, makes the full hungry 
and the hungry full, and the rich poor, and the poor rich. In short, Hannah praises the God who sides with the have-nots. Now, some might say that God is the God of all people, that there are fine people on both sides of the have-have-nots divide. It is true that at the end of Hannah's prayer, she asks God to give strength to the king, God's anointed one, the symbol of temporal power. But the king in Hannah's prayer is an idealized king, one who is a true shepherd of the people, caring not for himself, but for the safety and welfare of all. The role of the haves is to care for the have-nots. And some might say that the facts on the ground don't warrant a belief in a God of justice, not when the income gap between the rich and the poor is widening, when tens of thousands of people live on the streets, when the Congress and the courts decide in the favor of the rich and the powerful. But remember that Hannah's vision of a just God is based on one personal experience where her seemingly impossible situation was reversed, where she was no longer trampled on, but instead, with God's help, raised up. It was enough to lead her to conclude that the God who helped her is the one true God. We, too, can point to examples where the God of the have-nots is prevailing. Just this past week, the city of Glendale passed a resolution apologizing for its history of racial exclusion, becoming the first city in California and the third in the nation to do so. Glendale was once a bastion of white supremacy and a so-called sundown town where African Americans were not welcome after dark. The resolution adopted unanimously last month by the Glendale City Council came in the wake of the international outcry after the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. It is hoped that the Glendale resolution will lead to a greater diversity in city government and the police force. These advances may appear to be small and slow in coming, but as the Martin Luther, as the, uh, but as the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. James Russell Lowell once wrote, We see dimly in the present what is small and what is great. Slow of faith, how weak an arm may turn the iron helm of fate. Hannah's weak arm turned the iron helm of fate and raised and brought down kings. Will we step up and take our turn at the helm? Amen.
Let us pray. Creator God, whose nature is justice, we confess our acceptance of injustice. We too often shake our heads and think nothing can be done. We watch helplessly as the strong get what they want and the weak are left empty-handed. We keep to ourselves and pretend all is well. But you are a God who knows all and weigh in the balance the actions of your people. Grant us the courage to speak against wrongs when we see them, knowing that one small act can turn around the course of even a nation. We pray for those who especially need your help at this time. Watch over those who are sick, that they may fully recover. Keep well doctors, nurses, hospital staff, and caregivers. For upon them the lives of the vulnerable depend. We pray for those who are seeking after justice that you will grant them endurance to run the race. We thank you, O God, that you keep watch over your creation and that you will not let the strong trample over the weak. We thank you that you are working now, even now through us, to create your beloved community even though it appears that those who speak falsehoods and practice cunning are in command. We know that their houses are built on sand and will collapse when the earth shakes. You, O oh God, are a God of justice. You cast the mighty down from their thrones and raise the lowly from the dust. You are bringing forth the day when the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard with the goat, the calf with the lion, and a little child will lead them. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let us now offer our gifts to God.
As Jesus taught us, so now we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It has been good to be able to worship God together. Have a safe and healthy week, and please plan to join us again next week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen.